How's it going everyone? Today you join us at Monticello and behind me is this GR86. It's new, it's cool, so let's walk around it and check it out. Now, this car is obviously all new in terms of styling and there's a lot going on here. Now one thing that we can't talk about yet is how this new car drives and we know how the old car right there drives. It's a fun rear wheel drive vehicle, affordable, not too much power, but still just a blast to get out on the road. But we're not allowed to talk about how this one drives until August 17th. However, we have Paul Gerard here, who is our racing driver, and he is taking this around the track. So if you want to see a full track review of this car, be sure to come back August 17th, because that's when that is going up. But right now, we can still walk around this new GR86 and take a look at some of what is new about it. At the front, you can see some vents, and these are actually functional vents, not only on the front, but also on the back. So if you look through the wheel well there, you can see some of those openings help move air around a little bit. And then this wheel tire combo is specifically for the GR86 Premium. So the base model of the car has a 17 inch wheel with a Michelin Primacy HP tire, this is a Michelin Pilot Sport 4 on an 18 inch wheel. So just a little bit nicer running gear. You've got an 11.6 inch front brake and 11.4 inch rear. McPherson strut suspension in the front, multi-link suspension in the back. And this particular premium model and all premium models have this cool duckbill spoiler, which definitely adds to the flavor of the car in terms of appearance. And there's a number of interesting little bits here. This funky kind of detail that's around the wheel arch under the door, these really interesting lines, and even around the back with the exhaust, some pretty sharp styling elements. Even a couple of vortex generators on the light here. Now stepping inside, get to see the absolute best thing about this car turn off the headlights. All the lighting on this is LED, but that's not the best thing about it. The best thing is a six-speed manual. There is also a six-speed automatic transmission available, but come on, that's what you want right there. Now, looking at the interior overall, you can see some nice premium materials, Alcantara. These seats are specific to the premium model, and this stereo in this car is also specific to the premium model. So the base version of the GR86 has a six speaker audio system. This is an eight speaker audio system. Now I'm gonna pull the door closed because I want to show you something cool that this car does. If you focus on the screen, when I start it up, you can see this cool animation that kind of makes it look like a little boxer engine is running on the screen. And you can see a little G meter there on your left and your tack in the middle. Now, if I hold down this track button, the display will change. And now you have a slightly sportier display that gives you just a different representation of the tachometer. And the automatic version of this car has a few differences uh, as compared to the manual. The automatic version of this car has a sport mode in addition to the track and standard setting, which adds the G meter to the left side of the screen. Um, a few other things that the automatic version of this car has that the manual doesn't is some of the active safety features like pre-collision braking, adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning. So the manual transmission version of this car is definitely the more simple, boiled down to bare essentials version of it. And that's something that a lot of us enthusiasts are not mad about, especially the enthusiasts that are going to be driving with three pedals. That simplicity is very nice. You can also see some heated seats right here with two different positions and just a lot of cool elements on the interior. I like the GR logo on the start stop button. Of course, you've got aluminum pedals and even an aluminum dead pedal, you know, a real traditional parking brake. That's always welcome. Nice leather around the bottom of the shifter. Pretty cool vent design. Well, overall, this interior, it's nothing crazy, but they've added enough elements to it to make it a nice place to be. 
Here in the center, you've got an eight inch infotainment screen. It's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then of course, all these buttons here are pretty nice. They're a little plasticky, but they look nice, at least visually. Um, yeah, same thing with these vents. It's not the worst looking thing, but again, these are going to be, you know, fairly affordable cars. So it's understandable that not everything is made out of metal and diamonds and whatever else they use to build luxury cars. Now here, these back seats are um, hilarious. You can see that there's not a ton of leg room. But the nice thing about these back seats is that if I run around to the passenger side and I tilt this forward and I can go over here to the trunk, pop it open maybe, yes, and then pull these two straps. Oh, there's going to be some multitasking here. Yeah, there we go. You can open up the whole trunk area big enough to be able to supposedly carry around an extra set of tires for a track day. That's what Toyota is claiming, and I don't have an extra set of wheels and tires for this car to uh, demonstrate that, so we'll have to take their word. But one way or another, it's a decent amount of trunk space. When you fold the seats down, it's probably more useful as a trunk than a back seat, but back seat will work in a pinch. Not a huge area to load your stuff into, so yeah. No big surprise, any of your big items probably not going to fit under the hood or in the trunk, rather. Now, speaking of under the hood, we do have to go under here. Although power and torque are not really the highlights of this car, you do have a bigger engine now. It's a 2.4 liter boxer engine as opposed to the 2 liter that was in the old model. You now have 228 horsepower instead of 205 horsepower in the old model, and you have 184 pound-feet of torque. And what's really important is that the torque now peaks at 3,700 RPM instead of 6,600 RPM in the old model. So that torque is going to be a lot more usable. This is, of course, like I mentioned, a flat four, and it's built in conjunction with Subaru, so similar to the motor, or pretty much the same as the motor that you'll find in the BRZ. So overall, very cool car. I'll give you kind of a wide look at it here. Of course, like I mentioned, the exterior styling has changed a ton, and it looks, in my opinion, a lot more modern than the previous version. Now, Toyota is also going to be offering some aftermarket parts that you can add to these cars to help you customize them. And if this ends up being anything like the previous generation, there's going to be tons of aftermarket support. So we're definitely going to see a lot of heavily modified versions of these cars kicking around places like SEMA and even just driving around the streets that you drive on regularly. Now let us know in the comments below what you think of the new car. And again, stay tuned for August 17th when we'll actually be publishing the video of Paul driving this on the track, taking it to the limit, and letting you know exactly what it's like. We'll see you in the next video.